Well, it's 2023 and I want to share my credit card strategy for the year. Now, my primary focus is racking up a significant amount of travel points so that I can start making these videos from Costa Rica or even the Maldives. Honestly, anywhere other than Jersey. So if you've been watching this channel, you know my first move for 2023 was to secure the Capital One Venture X. Now, I was a little bit late to the game with this one, but I ended up getting approved and I couldn't be happier with the credit line they gave me. This is one of those cards where you look at it and you get confused because there's no way they're offering so much value in relation to the annual fee. This card includes airport lounge access for you and guests, completely free authorized users, 10X and 5X elevated earning structures on travel from Capital One, absolutely incredible travel benefits and protections, and also a 75 thousand mile sign up bonus. Not to mention the VentureX's base earning rate is 2x miles, meaning I can take my Fidelity Rewards visa and chuck it into a landfill and not look back. Okay, okay, I don't condone chucking your Fidelity Rewards visa into a landfill, just tuck it away somewhere where you can't see it. But make sure to sprinkle a little love on it every six months so it doesn't disintegrate. So the VentureX has a 2x base earning rate, simply meaning that for every dollar I spend, I'll get two miles. And since the miles are valued at roughly two cents each, that means I'm getting around 4% back worth of value on everything I purchase. And this means not only is this gonna be my premium travel card, but it's also gonna take the place of my flat rate catch-all card. And this means one less card in my wallet. And not to mention, the VentureX is a Visa. So there's certain places you may be able to use this card in order to reduce your wallet by yet another card slot. And my second move for the year was to secure the Chase Freedom Flex for one very important reason grocery store spend. Since Chase Freedom's Q1 2023 rotating 5X category includes grocery stores, I wanted to get this card as soon as possible so I can take full advantage of this. But on top of that, I was really interested in this card's current welcome bonus. Since Chase is currently offering 5X points on grocery store purchases for the first 12 months on up to $12,000 of spend, that means I can get 9X Chase Ultimate Rewards points for this entire quarter and then 5X Ultimate Rewards points for the remainder of 2023. Now, since I have a healthy American appetite, combined with grocery prices being through the roof, I think we're gonna get pretty close to that $12,000 cap on the 5X point bonus. So I got the Venture X, I got the Freedom Flex, and my next move is gonna be getting the Built Rewards MasterCard. And my plan is to get this card within the next few months. Now, if you've been following this channel, you may know that I own my home, so you may be saying to yourself, well, Josh, why do you wanna get the Built Rewards card? Well, that's because I have a really strong feeling that Built is gonna start allowing homeowners to get rewards for paying their mortgages. And I think it's pretty evident that this is at least somewhere in the pipeline due to this response from Built's official Reddit account. Now, take that for what it's worth. It's possible that they'll never allow you to use the card to pay mortgages. Who knows? But I really hope they do. Another reason I want this card is honestly because I make videos about credit cards and I believe it really does add value to my content when I actually have and use the cards that I'm talking about. Now I did make a video review of the Built Rewards card up here, but I'll briefly mention the things that I personally love about the card. First of all, as silly as it may sound, it's a metal card that weighs in at 16 grams and it has a nice premium look to it. I like that. But my absolute favorite feature of this card, besides the whole earning points on rent thing, is it gives you access to incredible transfer partners like Hyatt and even American Airlines, which is pretty unheard of for a card that has no annual fee. Plus, it has no foreign transaction fees, gets 3x points on dining, 2x points on travel, and 1x points on everything else. However, once I get this card, my wife and I are going to have to move our date nights to the first of every month, and that's because Built actually doubles the points you earn on non-rent purchases on the first of the month. 6x points on dining that I can then transfer out to Hyatt and get over 2 cents per point for from, that's like getting 12 plus percent back. Sign me up. The only caveat to this card is you have to make at least five transactions per month in order to earn built points. And this is really to ensure that built can continue to offer this card without an annual fee. Now for me, this stipulation isn't really a big deal because I do plan to use this card as my dining card as it has a really competitive multiplier. But even if you didn't want to use this card for dining out or for travel purchases, you could simply use it to pay your rent and then make four small purchases with it per month in order to satisfy that five purchase minimum. Oh, and I took a little bit of time and finally made a website where you can find some of my favorite credit cards that I personally use. And I also have my referral links there, and if you do end up using any of them, just know that it helps me continue to make this content, so I really am grateful of you guys. But after the built card, the next card I plan to apply for later this year is a card that's probably one of the most popular credit cards around. 
And that's the Amex Gold card. Now, of course, I'd personally go with the rose gold version because just like Brian Jung said, if you're classy, you should get the gold. But if you're more on the feminine side, you can't go wrong with getting the rose gold. Let me know down below, are you team gold or are you team rose gold? Now, why do I want to get this card? One, the sign up bonus is fantastic. You can score anywhere from 60,000 to sometimes even 100,000 MR points when you meet the minimum spend requirements. And when I complete the Venture X sign up bonus, which is going to be by April, I'd like to start working toward a new welcome bonus. And that's because welcome bonuses are the way to get the most value for your money. Now, I did just get the 5X Rose Restore bonus for 12 months with the free Freedom Flex, so I don't plan to use the Amex Gold card for groceries until January 2024. But I definitely want to get that welcome bonus and start at least taking advantage of those dining credits it offers. Now, on top of the $20 per month of Uber and dining credits, this card earns 4x MR points on grocery store and dining spend, so I plan to use the Amex Gold and the Built card on dining purchases. And the thing about some of these cards that have the higher annual fees is they're really meant for people who can take advantage of the multipliers and the credits that they offer. You have to really be mindful of how much you actually spend in certain categories in order to determine if you'll be able to get more value than what the annual fee is going to cost you. And that value isn't always black and white. For the gold card, really if you can't get any value from the $240 worth of Uber and dining credits they offer, this card may not be a good fit. And that's fine. This card is clearly targeting people who spend a lot of money on food. For my wife and I, we spend probably $10,000 per year at the grocery store, which would get us 40,000 MR points for the year. We can then take those points and transfer them to one of Amex's travel partners and possibly get around $800 worth of travel. And for me, like I mentioned with the built card, I wanna have the card in hand, be able to use all the features it includes so that I can simply provide better content for you guys. But the timing on when I actually apply for this card is gonna depend on when I can get the best welcome offer for it. Another card I'm really interested in getting is the Chase Inc. Unlimited. The only thing that's really holding me back from getting that card is, frankly, that I wouldn't be able to hit the required spend for the welcome bonus. Now, since I'd be applying with my business and I prefer to keep my business spend separate from my personal spend, I'll need to wait until this channel is generating enough revenue to where I can go out and upgrade some of my equipment. This card is currently offering $900 in cash back when you spend $6,000 in the first three months which is a really attractive offer. And I'm crossing my fingers that this offer is still on the table when I'm ready to apply for it. Now I'm anticipating being ready to get this card, maybe Q3 or Q4 of this year, but we're gonna have to wait and see how the year plays out. Now, the thing I find appealing about this card is that I'll be able to earn a flat 1.5X points, and then I can then transfer those points to my personal Sapphire Preferred and then use them for personal vacations. Another reason I'm interested in getting this card is so that I can build a business relationship with Chase as well as build up my business credit. Now, I'm also toying with the idea of applying for the Amex Platinum, maybe Q3 or Q4 this year. Now that's a card that comes with an incredible sign-up bonus, and I think it would make a nice addition to my collection. But I don't know, we're gonna have to wait and see how the next few card applications go, and also what kind of welcome offers are available later this year. And I also do want a dedicated hotel card, but I need more time to think about that one. I did put some feelers out there on my community tab to see what your favorite hotel group is, and so far, Hyatt is the winner. And I've gotta admit, they do have some really nice properties. And if you want to take a peek inside my wallet, you'll definitely want to check out this video next. Thanks for being here. Peace.